a lot of people have said, we know it's bad, how do we get out? So here's three things to consider to start your expat experience. And to be clear, I'm not an immigration lawyer, so do your research. Number one, it all comes down to work. You can't just turn up overseas and expect to make an income. That's illegal, you'll get yourself in big trouble. You have to have a job to go to and you have to have the right working visas. So a couple things to think of. Can your company sponsor you to move overseas? Are they a big company? Do they have offices in different parts of the world that they can send you to? Or are there companies in other parts of the world looking for people with your particular experience and skill set? To sweeten the deal a bit, especially if you're at a big company with lots of offices around the world, ask if you can be seconded to a place. Ask if you can go to the Tokyo offices to work for three or six months. It doesn't seem as big of a lift for companies when you ask it that way, and it's a good way for you to trial out whether or not you like to live overseas. Number two, look into digital nomad visas. Post-COVID, a lot of places have introduced digital nomad visas. Bali, Italy come to mind. These are visas that allow you, if you're tech-enabled and you work remotely, to check out some of these places on a short-term basis and still be able to earn an income. And number three, and a lot of people look down on this, but I wouldn't discount it, consider English teaching. There's a lot of places around the world that are looking for people like you to teach English to people where it's not their native language. So definitely consider that as a first way in to an expat experience. Maybe if you're younger and uh, you're looking for a way out, that's a great way to do that. Just make sure you do your research because some of them are scams, so make sure you know where you're going before you go. Like, follow, and definitely throw some comments in if you have questions. I'm happy to answer what I can. Hi, so here are a few tips of how you can leave the U.S. and move to a country abroad. Also, these are just a few brief tips. It does like take a long time and a lot of coordination to figure it out, but I'm happy to share any information that I have and also answer any questions in the comments. Um, so yeah. Uh, the first thing I'd say is figuring out uh, what you can do for a job and how that can align with some sort of visa. So you can do that one of two ways. You could either look at large corporate companies and seeing which companies have different locations around the world and applying for those jobs, starting it in the US and then eventually asking if you can relocate. And through that relocation, you can have help with housing sometimes. You can also have, um, you get sponsorship obviously and a visa through the company. Another way you can do it is by uh, looking at remote work and seeing if any countries have um, freelancing or like digital nomad visas. I know in the Netherlands they have a freelancing visa, that's the one that I'm trying to apply for um, as a freelance graphic designer. And I know in Italy they also have like a digital nomad visa that they just introduced. Um, so yeah, that allows you to work from anywhere and get sponsorship through that. And then for housing, you can join different Facebook groups um, for the city that you want to move to and starting to see about budget and rent and what the housing market is like. I know here in Amsterdam, it's really difficult to find housing, so I got really lucky and I'm really grateful. Um, but yeah, that's something to consider with where you want to move. And that's all. I can think of for now in this short video, but if you guys have more questions or comments, I'm happy to help and make this become a reality for more people. That's all. I wanted to answer some questions I got on why we decided to move from New York to Copenhagen and some tips on how to do it. Copenhagen has been named the best city in the world for work-life balance and scores high on happiness, safety, and well-being. English is the second language, so you don't need to know Danish at first, and English is also used as a professional language at work. To move here, I recommend finding a job at a global company that will sponsor the visa and relocation for you and your family. I used LinkedIn, but you can also check out workindenmark.dk, and there's also a list called the Positive List, which is a list of professions experiencing a shortage of qualified professionals in Denmark. For more information and options, I recommend checking out the new to Denmark website as well. How to become an expat. I broke it down to four easy steps. Step one is deconstructing the mind. Yeah, this sounds like a big task. Some might call it a cheat code, but I have the truth code. 
If you want to know more about this very important step right now, you can go to my link in my bio and fill out the contact me form and I can even give you a call of step by step of exactly how you can do this right now. Step two is pick your location. The location you pick, it doesn't have to be a forever thing. I mean, the whole point is to be free, right? Don't buy it, just try it. I mean, chill in the location for a few weeks or a few months, you know, figure out if that place is right for you. I mean, don't fully commit into an area if you're not too sure. A remote job would be really cool, so if you have one, awesome, but it's not necessary. If there's a will, there is a way. Step three, learn the language. Don't go into another country and expect everybody to accommodate to you. Even if you're not fluent, if you're putting in the effort, they're going to appreciate it. I'm doing my own self-study of Spanish of the app Dolingo, and it really does help. I practice every single day, and it gets me by. Step four, trust yourself. All the answers are within. Do not fall into fear. Have faith. Your happiness is the most important. Yep, some might think that you're crazy, but you're the one that has courage to do this. It's easier than people think. Everybody can have this. You just have to trust yourself and follow those four easy steps. Step number one, deconstructing your mind is so important. I mean, it's hard to not fall back into the same thoughts and fears without this important step. So go check out that link and let's start deconstructing your mind right now. Bonus step for ultimate happiness. If you already follow these four steps, this one is just gonna put the icing on the cake. Disconnect from the America agenda. That means turning off the TV. That means not listening to the news, not getting caught up in the fear that it's been playing this whole time. I mean, you left for a reason, right? Why are you still playing that game still? If it's your dream to move abroad, I'm going to tell you how we did it, step by step, but I need to start way before we actually made the move. The first thing we did was set a timeline and we gave ourselves a year to figure out the details. We made a ton of sacrifices in that year. We got our cost of living as low as humanly possible for that year, so we dropped one car and we ended up moving in with our family for part of the year. Our first focus was paying off debts. Once we had paid off credit card, medical, and part of our student loan bills, we then started saving. We saved and saved until we had an entire year worth of living expenses in our bank account, knowing that we were starting a new business in a new country and it would probably take that long for us to turn a profit. We each had three suitcases, one carry-on, one medium-sized, and one large. Anything that didn't fit was sold. We booked one-way flights and that was that.